Hello, my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch. Welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now, today is our crochet along granny square day. And what we've been doing is each month, January, February, March, April, and May, making a six inch square once a month. Now we're making two of each squares, although you can make more if you want to make a bigger blanket or whatever you want to make with these squares. You can use them all together or individually. All we're doing is just making a square a month, six inch. And at the end, when we have all 12 squares completed, two of each square, I'm going to show you how to put them together in a continuous join blanket. But of course, like I just said, you can do whatever you want with them. All right, so this is January Garnet, February Amethyst, March Aquamarine, April Diamond, and this month is our May Emerald. Now I realize this is not the color of green that Emerald is. I am going to be using a little bit darker of a green, but the deep green of Emerald is so dark it doesn't film well so i'm going to be doing just a little bit lighter green color but this one i stitched up just to retest the pattern and it's so pretty the goal of this month was just to make it sort of look like a stone like a cut stone gem and it has lots of v stitches and it's a really fun and simple pattern and what we've tried to do with all 12 of our patterns is make them simple yet different and fun. And remember, you don't have to do them in the colors that I make them. If you love this pattern, you can make them whatever colors that you want to. Same with all of them. Some of them are two colors. Some of them are solids. And so you can do whatever you want with those squares. They're just fun to make. And of course, there's endless possibilities of what you can make with granny squares or crochet squares. Now, you can find the complete pattern for our emerald green granny square on my blog. And on that blog, I also have a link for all the other squares that we've completed so far. And I'll also have the video link underneath this video as well, so you'll be able to find those. All right? Each pattern is a written pattern with a photo tutorial and then, of course, our video. And again, you can find that link down in the notes underneath this video. Now I am designing all of the patterns using acrylic number four yarn, number four medium weight yarn, okay? And I'm using acrylic. You could use cotton if you want to or some other fibers. Just remember that it's a good idea not to mix your fibers when you're going to make a completed blanket with the squares. And that's why I'm using all of the acrylics. If you mix in wool, remember wool doesn't wash the same, it, it felts and shrinks. So keep that in mind when you're picking your yarns. This particular thing, doing a square a month out of acrylic yarn, is a really great way to maybe use up some yarns you didn't really care for and make some fun squares and put them together. Because remember, you can do them whatever colors that you want to. This is just a green that I had on hand. This is a Red Heart Super Saver. It's not anything special. This one here, this lime green is from Hobby Lobby. It's their I Love This yarn, 100% acrylic. And it's so it's okay to mix your uh, brands as long as they're made of the same fibers. We're going to be using an H hook today. We're using an H hook for most of the squares. There's a couple that we're using an I for when the square is a little bit tighter stitched and so um, it doesn't come out as big and so we wanna make it just a little bit easier to put the squares together and have them meet up, okay? But for this one today, we're using an H hook, which is a five millimeter crochet hook, and then you need a needle to weave in your ends and a pair of scissors. All right, let's get started. We're gonna start with our slip knot, and we're going to chain five chains. We're going to join this chain five into a circle And we'll make that stay knot. Now, if you prefer another method of making your beginning circle, you certainly can use the magic circle or another method. We're going to go in, pull up a loop, and chain four. This chain four counts as a double crochet 
chain one. All right, now we're going to stitch 11 sets of double crochet, chain one. And that will give us a total of 12 because our beginning chain four counted as a double crochet chain one. Double crochet, chain one. Some more yarn out here. All right, I guess I better count. I've lost count in my head. So here's our first one. This is our chain four that counted as our first double crochet, chain one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we need to get two more so that we have a total of 12. All righty. Now we're going to join to that third chain of that beginning chain four. And then we're going to slip stitch in that first chain one space. And chain four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> now on the back, you'll notice that I stitched over my tail of yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that. I'm going to go ahead and grab my needle and weave that in. You, you can do it later if you want to. I just like to go ahead and get them done now. Let me move that out of the way there. But again, it's up to you. Do it now, do it later. All right, then I'll clip that. And then I don't have to worry about it. All right, so for round one, we have 12 sets of double crochet, chain one. All right, now we've chained four, and that chain four counts as a double crochet, chain one, in that first chain one space, and we're going to double crochet in that same chain one space. And that gives us a V stitch. All right, now we're gonna go to the next chain one space and stitch a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So basically we're placing a V stitch in each of the chain one spaces. And again, our V stitch is a double crochet, chain one and double crochet in each of the chain one spaces working all the way around. I have completed a V stitch in each of my chain one spaces, so I have 12 V stitches. All right, I'm going to join to the third chain of my beginning chain four with a slip stitch and then I'm going to slip stitch in that first chain one space of my first V stitch and chain three. On this row, we're going to begin forming the corners of our square. All right, this chain three counts as a double crochet. We're going to double crochet, chain one, and then two more double crochets in that same chain one space. One, and two. All right, now we're going to move over to our next V stitch and stitch a V stitch in that chain one space. So chain, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And then we'll do that in the next V stitch. Now this is the row where it can kind of mess you up if you don't pay close attention because you wanna make sure you're only stitching in the chain one space of the V stitches. Um, when we were testing it, sometimes we accidentally went in that space in between. So just pay attention a little bit and watch, make sure you're going in the chain one spaces of the V stitches. So we have a corner and two V stitches. Now we come to the next V stitch 
and we're going to stitch our second corner. So two double crochets, one, two, chain one, and two double crochets. There's our second corner. Now we're going to stitch a V stitch in the next two chain one spaces of our V stitches. And see how we're beginning to form the shape of our square? All right, so now we're going to repeat what we did here two more times. We'll do a corner and two V stitches, and again, only stitch in the chain one spaces of our V stitches. I have completed that on those last two sides, so we have our four corners, two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, and then we have two V stitches in between on each side. We're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch. We'll slip stitch in that double crochet and then slip stitch in that chain one space of our corner and chain three. Alrighty, now <clears throat> we're going to double crochet in that same chain one space, chain one and two double crochets. There we go one and two. This time we're going to do a chain one. Now we'll move to that chain one space of our first V stitch and stitch a V stitch and chain one. Then we'll go to the next chain one space of the next V stitch and stitch our V stitch and chain one. So we're doing the same thing that we did on the previous row. We're only placing a chain one in between where we didn't on that previous row. All right, so now I'm to my corner. So two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets, one and two chain one, V stitch in the chain one space of the next V stitch, chain one, V stitch in the next chain one space of the next V stitch, chain one. And see the difference? <clears throat> it opens it up. <clears throat> Got a scratchy throat there. It opens it up. All right. So then we've done our chain one and we go to our next corner and then we'll just repeat what we did here on these next two sides. Corner, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, and repeat on these last two sides. I have completed row four and you can see it's a little more open where we added those chain ones in between our V-stitches and corners. All right, so now we have our chain one. We're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch, slip stitch in the double crochet, then slip stitch in the chain one space of our corner, and we'll stitch our corner. So chain three, double crochet, chain one, and two double crochets in the corner, one and two. Now we're going to chain two, one, two. Then we'll go to the V-stitch, stitch our V-stitch, which is again double crochet, chain one and double crochet, and chain two. And then we'll repeat that in the next chain one space of that next V-stitch. And chain two. Then we go to the chain one space of our corner. All right, and see how that opens that up even more? All righty, so it's a really simple pattern here. So we'll do our double crochet, chain one, and then two more double crochets. So we have our two double crochet, chain one, two double crochets for our corner, chain two. 
We'll go to the next V stitch, stitch our V stitch in that chain one space and chain two and repeat. And chain two. All right, so now we're at the corner again. And so what we're going to do is repeat what we did here on these next two sides. We'll do our corner, chain two, V-stitch, chain two, V-stitch, chain two, and then the corner on these last two sides. I have completed those last two sides. Now, if it starts to curl up a little bit on this particular row, don't worry about it. Our last row that we're going to do is going to help that lay nice and smooth. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to join to our chain three, like we've been doing, with a slip stitch, slip stitch in the next double crochet, and then slip stitch in the chain one space. All right, so what we're going to do in this <clears throat> chain one space is we're going to chain one, and then we're going to stitch two single crochets. One, two, we're going to chain one, and then stitch two single crochets. One and two. All right, so now on this row, we're going to be doing all single crochets. Now we're going to single crochet in these two, that first one's a little tight there, in those two double crochets. Next, we're going to place two single crochets in that chain two space. Now we're going to place a single crochet in the two double crochets of the V-stitch. We are not placing one in the chain one space. All right, that brings us to the chain two space. We'll stitch two single crochets. One single crochet in the two double crochets, but not the chain one space. And then two single crochets in the chain one space and then one single crochet in the two single crochets. And then you'll notice that helps that lay nice and flat as we moved along. That brings us to the corner and we're going to stitch two single crochets, one, two, chain one, and two single crochets, one and two. And then again, we'll repeat across here what we did over here single crochet in those first two double crochets, two single crochets in that chain two space, one single crochet in the two double crochets, but not the chain one space, and repeat that across. Whoops, <laughs> that brings us to those last two double crochets and to the corner. And then we'll just repeat what we did here on these last two corners. So I've completed that row of single crochet all the way around. We're going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and cut our yarn. And we'll go in that next loop and pull that loop to the back so we can weave it in in the back of our square. Now, if you're not happy with the way that your square is laying, because this one is one that's a little more um, tricky to get it to be a nice square, although once you stitch them together, of course, they do come out nicely. But you can grab your blocking board and block your squares if you want to. I do explain how to do the blocking for squares on the first video at the end of that very first video that we did in January. All right, so if you wanna learn how to block it, real simply, just watch that video, fast forward to the end, and I explain that to you. I do block my squares before I put them on uh, into a blanket or something because I think it makes it easier to match up the sides. 
you know, but you don't have to. You do not have to block your squares. All right, so this is our May Emerald Granny Square for our year-long crochet along 2024.